All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog, Awaken to the Eternal, Kevin Meredith here. The revelation will not be televised for your life, part four. I had previously downloaded this podcast, but felt it wasn't spiritually edifying enough to the uh, brethren and the sisters out there who you real ones out there and I wanted to clarify um, what I've what I've seen in my own experience of um, you know basically why people really step away from YouTube from friendships relationships uh, family and life why the need to do that is um, you come to a point, but not, you know, in terms of doing it for the wrong reasons as compared to doing it for the right reasons is really um, what I'm asking the Spirit to lead me in. And so, yeah, you have what you see as the soul connection or one soul essence to life, that greater connection not to say something like the crowd or the hive mind exactly the opposite when you're going through this when you're when you come to know yourself in Christ um, remember that the sole essence of who you are of your connection is to solely rely and have a relationship as gifted by the Most High by way of the Holy Spirit so that you can be drawn closer to his son Jesus Christ and all other engagements in life will be a test from that. And so you might be asking yourself, well, Kevin, why have I gone through this life of rejection? Why have, you know, why, you know, why haven't my relationships been able to break ground when initiating them? Or why can't I seem to break this soul tie or even trauma bond? You know, what's with that? You know, what, why? you know, months later, years later, um, you know, did the relationship go awry, yet there seems to be some type of soul connection that's being confused more into a confusion that's leaving you questioning why. And so, my best answer is left as an open-ended question that one has to live through. To, to bring testimony to and to get closure and in, in one's own timing, you know, with in 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 terms of uh, that with the most high's timing for your life, you know, and so as with this so-called TI community, as with these re personal relationships, you're going to have to be very, very spiritually discerning, but it's actually hard to begin to expound upon the spiritual discernment if you're not purposing your time alone, you know, in terms of what you're asking of the Most High. And so, you know, as for myself, I've said it before, like, you know, I don't know when that time is, but I know that when it comes, it's going to be spirit-led by the Holy Spirit. I say this because I've seen so many come and go from this community to where I could feel it, it, it was out of being exhausted from it it was out it was it was after not making the connections that one had desired in that moment's time and that you know one has only had only seen failure in in, in such relationships when trying to you know and, and and see this is where you have to spiritually discern you know relief from restorative regeneration of what the most is doing this is where you have to see that where satan might be inquiring of your soul uh, in God's high courts, the Most High is requiring of your soul in these trying times. And everything has to be broken down. You have to, you really have to see yourself. You have to look at yourself in the mirror when you, you are, you are coming to know yourself in Christ. And it's, for a lot of us real ones, this is a day-to-day, -day, moment by moment, you know, it can be overly self-critical at times, self-analytical to, you know, you might be thinking, well, I am, the, I am the culmination of all my decisions. Yes, but if all those decisions have led you to doubt, 
then where are you is the question where in another respect if you had given everything you doubted to the most high and he's he's brought comfort and, and, and true relief not just you know external relief but um, Christ centered relief then that is the time to be okay and, and something you're prepared for in actually stepping away from when it comes to something like this so-called TI community these uh, failed relationships and, and not being able to understand it. and you have to make the connection to the disconnect if you will you have to spiritually discern wait you know am I bringing in my own soul ties or, or trauma bonds that I that I that have not been examined and am I indirectly you know feeding into that loop cycle or that trauma to trauma relationship which is not edifying to, to any of the parties involved and, and not giving glory to the most high and yes is the the setup of the program to get you to do that for sure you know that's all it, it it's it's just as hard it's 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 a it's always a it's always Satan uh, getting his two for one to make it that much harder on a real one for sure you know the other thing too is you know has this program set up these trauma bonds and soul ties in bringing in perpetrators into your life that where they have purposely miscommunicated the, 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 the true one or the real one's soul essence or connection with the Most High as, as something of worldly understanding only. Look, it does, the world doesn't have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have the, the soul essence or the, or the connection to the Most High. So the best it can do is subpar to God's standard. And so if that's all it knows, that's all it's going to, it's going to reciprocate back. And it will leave a void in your life where you're going to be left in a negative place and a very confused place when relating, you know. I've dealt with that firsthand is, you know, why, why do I feel left down? And then you come to this place months later where you're asking, this leads to this whole next set of questions is, you know, was that a soul connection or was that a soul tie? You know, and like I said before, look, don't look to throw the baby out with the bathwater unless you truly are spiritually discerned in such personal matters to a specific circumstance or relationship before you give up on it. Because there's always something to learn from it and in, in even taken away from it, even if you move on. And so say you moved on and you're, you're working through your healing process and you're you're confused about, wait, what just went on there? You know, why do I think about this person or why, you know, maybe even that person is, is continually thinking about me? Um, you know, because I look at it and, and I say, well, I can't be the only one that, that has gone through this, you know. But when we were relating, it was just nothing but negativity and confusion and, and, and blockage after blockage. But deep down there, there there's something deeper there's something that you need to work on. You need to get into the bigger picture of what God has grafted you into, even if you have to spend that time away to, to grow spiritually. And sometimes God will take you away from that soul connection or even, you know, and, and don't just let, don't, don't let yourself be at, you know, the party of guilt if you're, if you're being led to believe that it's just a soul tie that you're trying to break. It really could be something that had been, you know, used by the, you know, the evil one to throw a, you know, uh, throw a, throw a cog in your wheel, you know, I think that's the whole, st I, don't, I don't know, but, um, and so you might be left confused on the spiritual discernment of that and you have to retract, you have to get back to your soul's essence, your soul connection, which is the firm foundation, you know, a, 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 in terms of being made whole. This is something Christ talks about. Um, this gospel message is here to to make your soul whole again. You know, it often goes misconstrued in the Christian world, but it's nonetheless very true in its existent form. Yet it's not thoroughly examined because the Christ, Christ, Christendom do, doesn't always require personal self-involvement and self-examination to one's own testimony that, of what one's going through. And so you might want to give up on the whole thing, but you're not actually leaving with any spiritual closure, you know, and so you're being left to blame yourself as the guilty party. You're 
confounded by the deeper soul implication of why do you keep thinking about that person? What is it that's so strong about that person? Yet, yet while relating, it was so, it was just so negative and so confusing, you know. And um, I've asked myself this. I've seemed to have gone through life where, whether it's this program or whether it's these, even before I was awakened saying, look, there's these, you know, I go from thinking about one person in one idealized relationship to another. Am I codependent on what the world has tried to mimic within my life as something of a codependency to idealizing relationship, actually more so than actually realizing uh, the relationship in in, in actuality, in in the realistic uh, nature of actually having one. And this is what I believe, look, a lot of us real ones are born and kept away from the authenticity of real relationships. And so the reason a lot of us end up leaving in terms of the real ones is because, look at this, look at this triangle with the the reptile eye through it. Let's read this. The Deathly Hollows. That's what, that's the, that's the serpent eye that they're worshiping, for sure. Um, Let me digress though. So. I believe this is why the real ones eventually will take a break or actually permanently leave is because your soul connection is not being, it's not sufficing with these manufactured relationships. And even within this so-called TI community, you know, the world, if it sends an informant in or a perpetrator, it's going to throw confusion and negativity into what it defines as a soul connection or soul essence of, of the, the of the real one, which it doesn't really have. The best it can do is soul tie and, and, and trauma bond. That's the best this program can do when using uh, these perpetrators and informants. And so when you get to that place where it's fully exhausted, but maybe so you haven't learned from it, you're, you haven't self-developed from it, you haven't spiritually discerned and taken away any positive aspect from it. <laughs> I should be on another bike riding next to that guy listening to that guy's music. I digress though. And so you leave, but you don't leave on on okay terms. You're not okay with your yourself. You just haven't had those those those, those needs have been have become false wants. And so you leave because you're exhausted, you're drained. Uh, you understand that there's no one there for you, but you haven't come to the conclusion that wait, my soul is being required of me, my essence, my connection to the Most High. Um, and I know how hard it is to not want to connect at times, to not want to do the work. It's very hard to how this program ultimately makes it for a real one. And so a lot of them come and go, and even personally speaking, there's an intent to break to split you, whether it's your personality or your spirit or leave a dent in in your soul, leave an attachment, which comes in the name. It makes you believe that you you really did wrong. You're really the blameworthy party, you know? You really will, it will hang with you for a while. If you're you're traumatized by this empathic nature that, that, you know, these forces at work have put on you and created somewhat of a codependent, idealized nature within you, and I've noticed this for myself, you know, and that's when I have to say, look, I got to stop. I got to take a look at myself against that which has come at me, that which has tried to redefine, that which has tried to mimic or take or, or feed from, put a dent in my soul essence, you know, because you feel it with people when the relationship is no longer, but then you're left to understand and pick up the pieces and, and you got to stand back up from it and you got to, you got to get closure in your own time from it. And it's a real spiritual thing. It's not done by word of mouth. It's not done during the relationship. It's the same reason. It just, it's, it's really two directional at this point. You're, you're, you're exiting, but in the same sense, you can't, you know, you can't initiate it either. Uh, that's not, that's not what the most high would promise for his own. The, the most high's promises are one way and one way only. So you, now you have to understand God's bigger picture for why he's putting you on the path that's one way only. It's not two ways. It's not duality or that of the world. It's not. And so you're, um, look at this perp right here, tattletailing. And so he'll be gone in a minute. 
And so, then you have to move on up a level and someone might need to let you know or tell you, hey look, this, this might be what's going on with you. This is why you're, you've left. Because you've looked outside of yourself. And you haven't come to the point that everything you need is within you. You haven't learned from it. And so you're, you're, you're still in relief orientation. You're not in Christ-centered orientation. You know, you're not in God's bigger picture. You're in the, the two-directional uh, broad way of the world. You know, it's a, it's a it's a give and take relationship of compromise, and uh, you being a fuel source. Whether you, whether they know it or not, you know it or not, you can only testify it due to the fact that you are picking up from the negativity and confusion of it. You know, that's the truth of it. Now, then the relationship there's a break, but you're not you've broken contact physically, but the but something has been left for you to dwell on in the negative for. You know, why am I still thinking about this person? You know, but I do that. It, it takes a while. It takes the healing process for me probably takes, and everyone's different. Everyone, it's, it maybe it, it's based on personality type. Maybe it's burst, um, based on, you know, traumatic events that, that have, 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 have really put some damage and implication and a dent on your soul or your soul's et, uh, uh, um, essence for you to, to be a less, um, to, to reduce the efficacy of, of that which the spirit is, is is trying to imprint on your life to a greater pers- you know degree, if you will, and so you do have to take a step back, but you can do it in the bigger picture in order to take two steps forward and see it for what it is, you know, and so the hardest thing to deal with is is seeing the failure and not growing from it, and that's really why people leave whether it's set up that way or not all that you know is is you're left in the throes of the damage and the pieces that you got to pick up that's all you know you come to know that through life you know where god where you begin to see is when when through all this rejection you become the embodiment of love where it's not about how nice you are to people that's a worldly proposition this is Christianity. This is Gentile Christianity in its most false sense. If you, you know, if you are anything like me or I'm anything like you, no trauma, no trauma relation uh, meant by that, but through experience only, you will see that when you say the truth and it sounds harsh to the world, you know, it goes along the lines of such statements as, look, the truth, it, it, it heals some and it hurts others. Very true. Especially those who are not self-examined to Christ or to the Word or to their brethren or sisters in Christ. And, and then, so they're unable to even begin. And so they're, they are still construing their relationships as the world. And this is why you say, wait, look, wait, is that a, is that a Luciferian gang stalking alongside an evangelical Christian? Is that a Mason gang stalking alongside a Baptist, you know? And so... No, they don't. That guy's right. He is right, though. I mean... Look, this, and this is, see, you're going to, and you have to be very careful. It is a spiritual thing when we're talking about how you relate. God's standard has to be set up in your life for you to get healing, for your soul to be completed as a human being. That's the only connection you should have, and it should come by way of the Holy Spirit. The only, and it's not, and it's not like you're saying the Holy Spirit is an attachment. No, it is the foundational spirit to the chosen ones where the Holy Spirit leads you closer, draws you closer to Jesus Christ, who the world knows as Jesus Christ, okay? But at this time, they cannot have that. So relationship, respective to that, is not fully good enough by God for you until he brings us. And it's really what God is doing. God is the one who brings us together in his timing and you need to know that you need to know and for those who are playing games i got a good idea because i I sent this in a comment to a brother out there who whether he's real or not is not my concern 
my concern is to be as legitimate and 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 honest with the answer that I that I had written him back. And this that's this. Love is an action. That's it. Not love in action. You know, without work. It's it's fit. You know. It's an action. They have to show it to you, not just say it to you. And that's it. And that's why they're not around. You got to be very black and white with these types. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are truly there for one another in spirit and truth. They are not. So everything else is secondary. Everything else is but introduction, as Kierkegaard says. Let me see if this is still playing here. It is. And so, and that's why I say, look, the spirit is going to lead me either way, you know, to whether I'm going to stay with this or move on. Because it's not like I come in not understanding that there are those out there who have absolutely preconceived a judgment about me. There's Masonic hands on his bicycle. He, they always have like two fingers wrap. See, he has his right arm behind him with two fingers pointing, and then he has his left arm holding onto his two fingers. That's a Masonic impl implication of some sort. You guys let me know what you think that is. All I know is that that is just Masonic. And so you have these relationships where the tares are trying to sucker in the wheat. They're trying to, and they're really the unbeknownst wheat will fall for it hook, line, and sinker every time. But the aware ones, we have to go through the trial because we know that they know that we know. Okay? And so, to get back to, back, back to this, if you're going to leave, whether you're going to leave this so-called YouTube or this even so-called TI community on YouTube, your personal relationships, your community... You're not just doing it on your terms. You're doing it on God's terms. He's, he, he's getting you to act, not just to be a mode of language that you just give out. Your existence is judgment enough against them. This is why they're trying to separate you. They don't want you to have that effect uh, on others around you. And so everything that God's doing, God's bringing you into fruition as a part of your soul connection back to him and moving forward. That's, that's the only way I can see it. He's still separating you physically to get you, get your undivided attention spiritually back onto him. Whether you're truly at fault or not, whether you ever come to know that, um, it's not really the topic of discussion. The real topic of discussion is the fact that you know that you're going through something that the world is not, is not going through. It is not, it is there to judge, it is there to uh, persecute you in the name of judgment, uh, but it's also this thing where, as Satan is inquiring of your soul, the Most High is requiring you uh, of your soul through a process that's much more drawn out. It, it, it's eliciting the character building process of who you are. Not just who you're gonna become, but, but examining, self-involving yourself to every piece of growth, every dot you've connected, every stepping stone, every, every relationship that hadn't panned out, every every means of rejection that has come against you, every attempt by uh, these witches to psychically attack you, everything, the culmination thereof. Um, now, the thing is, is if, if you don't, if you just become reactionary to it, your spiritual discernment will be very low in your personal relationships of how you see them. If you respond to the Father with everything, you bring it back to the Most High, um, everything will begin to take its rightful place. And you will physically be let out in action. The Lord will be drawing you out in action against that those of the world. What is that, CSULB? Yeah, there's CSULB right there. There's my alma mater. Can you be an alumni who doesn't pay dues? <laughs> I don't know if I'm an alumni anymore. <laughs> I don't give anything to Long Beach State. Uh, but like I'm saying... You can come in and, and I don't see this is why the last podcast I was down giving that podcast. I was not in a good place to give that. I felt no, you have to set your soul's intention on that on the on the firm foundation. You can't just do it because you're reaching and you want your you have expectation of those returning. Look, like I said, there are those who have a preconceived judgment already. They they've already mentally door slammed you in life. 
And it's not just one, it's, it's life. It's when you're a real one and you go through this, it's most, you know. And another, th- another p- suggestion I wanna give you if you've gone through this and you're asking those questions is look, if you put yourself in the lives of others who only idealize relationships, meaning they have love for you, but there's no action, you don't belong around those people. They're listeners, they're spectators. Those who actually love you will move forward into your life and let you know about it verbally, with action, with goals, and and, and there will be a direction that the Most High is in between in terms of your two the two the two parties that are that are relating, whether it's you in community or you in a, a, you know with with another person. Um, this is self evident. This is this is spiritually discerning in a way where. It's done automatically. This, the, the Lord leads you into it, you know, and then you see it for what it is and it, and it continues to grow. And a lot of the times, if you force the issue, you're not only going to be forcing the, the, the relationship or the situation, you're going to be exhausted by it. You're going to feel negative and confused afterward. You know, you're going to be left wanting when you know that your soul's being required of you. But see, the hard part is, dealing with the work that and knowing that your soul is be actually being required of you through a process of God wanting God desiring to get you grafted more permanently into his bigger picture you know and if you don't do that God's one way street is look you're just you're just working your own demise at this point you got to you you have to know your worth you and that's God's standard for your life you know if you're avoiding that then you're going to be leaving a lot of thing, a lot of things in life, when it, especially when it comes to relationships, from an unsettled, unhealed, false self-relieving place, and you're going to want to constantly blame others for your your predicament that you're in. And I'm learning. I'm learning. Wait, the spirit's going to let me know. It's bringing me to this place where it lets me know that look, this community, this so-called TI community, at this point, it's pretty much fully exhausted of the spiritual fruit that it's bearing among individuals. You don't come here to have your soul, you know, your soul essence necessarily elaborated on. You come here and you ultimately will find out that this is a great test to to your soul's connection to the Most High. You know? You come and you give a message when you're on a good note, you know? You leave this community when you're on a good note. You do it the other way around and you're feeding into, the, the, you know, Satan's whole plan. And that's, you know, we all learn, and, you know, if you're like me, you, you, you learn the hard way. But you, you still come to the, 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 the open-ended question of, of living it out as the answer and growing toward it and becoming it and embodying it and knowing that the cause of the love that the Most High has instilled in you, it's not the same as the world's expectation of just telling you to give it to them so that basically they can steal it in the name of, of receiving your love. You know, where's your love? Where's your faith? You don't believe in the rapture, Kevin? Where's your faith? <laughs> Welcome to my house. <laughs> you know, and that's it. And, you know, and, and they just... And so you have a world which... It never gives back to the spiritual Israel of Jacob. It only looks to steal from and, 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 and traffic. And make a, a human commodity, a business of God's chosen... And a lot of them don't make it. A lot of them, you know, the two thirds aren't going to make it. The one, the one third are, are in a dire situation where their critical self-examination of, is of utmost importance right now. You know, and this is why I say the so-called TI community is a manufactured community. It's not. You are not. You have to ask yourself if I, if someone told you that, where do you put yourself biblically? Who are you according to the Bible then? And everyone, you know, a lot of TIs will have different answers. But if you're expecting the TI community to, to be your end-all, be-all, you will be left, your soul will be left wanting. And, you, and you, won't be, you won't be answering what the Most High is requiring of your soul through this test. And so you will leave. Uh, it, it will not suffice. These relationships will not suffice. You will be stonewalled, breadcrumbed, gaslighted, uh, set up, you know, all that. All that rejected, persecuted, it's it's all part of it, you know, and so 
yeah, my, will my time come where I will eventually have fully exhausted it and be okay in and of my own accord because the Lord has brought me to this this place spiritually? Absolutely. There will be a time where I step away and I will have no need to respond to everything that I've exhausted in and of this community, you know. I will go on to doing, you know, bigger and better things with my life, doing things for myself and for eventually, you know, hopefully, you know, if Lord willing, owning owning my 40 acres and inviting a bunch of Hebrew Israelites to my to my land, you know, and beginning to build. And so you never know. You never know when that time, that's, how, that's the Lord putting that inkling, beginning to sprinkle on the other side of 15 or foothill on the other side. his premonitions right, of what, what we are to do physically, what we, uh, you know, and, and before that, he's going to start putting it on your mind, putting it on your heart, testing you by these thoughts, testing you by these ideas, having you test them against that of the Holy Spirit before you actually do to know that you're truly being led by the Most High. You're truly grafted into the spiritual Israel of Jacob. You know, that's what the Lord's doing. And for those who are fallen by the wayside, we know what happens when the, 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 the seeds have been cast before the, you know, the, you know, before the thorns. And so it's, they sound very relevant and very truthful, but there's no action. They're not there for you. When, when the testing comes, they're the first to leave. They're the first to not, they don't want to put their feet in, feet to the fire, but so you end up going alone at it. And you find that there are others out there who are, who are going alone at it. Just same as your experience, burning away the traumas, burning away the soul ties, reconnecting back to who, what the Most High has penned in, what, are, what the prophets have prophesied, even though they didn't even get to, uh, you know, experience uh, the, full con- the full consummation of this specific age that we're in. Because we're still along the historical timeline, and these events have to come to pass. So everything looks good on the surface, and this has led me into the next conversation here, and that is this. The real, the real war that you're hearing about is actually going on in America, Babylon the Great. The greatest mystery that they're keeping from you, these, these Masonic fallen angels who are parading around with their worthless mysteries, like that means a damn thing to the Israelites. It's a joke. That's look. If you want to be a coward, you need to sell out to Satan. Satan loves cowards. He uses cowards all day to gang stalk the Most High's chosen seed. That's it. That's how you see it. When you're when you're in the existence of it, when you're in the throes of it, when your feet are put to the fire, you see the you see the real men and women of Christ who are being refined. They're being thrown into. They're being thrown in with Daniel with the lions, and they're coming out. You know. They're coming out stronger, you know. They're coming out on top of this. Even if you got to come out alone, your your cause of love of who you are, you're beyond personal relationships. You, I see. I don't. I just look at people like like we are acquaintances until we relate in the spirit, until we have a soul connection that is fully sovereign individually in our Lord, and that's how the Lord is going to bring us together. And it still hasn't fully come to fruition. We're in the throes of it. We're in the we're in what we see as the, 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 uh, what is it, uh, I'm trying to think of this, the, uh, I was going to say the trial of Jacob, but I can't remember, <laughs> uh, Jacob's trial, you guys let me know, you guys know what I'm talking about, Spirit's not just, it's not, he's not, Spirit's not giving me that right now, uh, but you know what it is, we're entering the, the, the trial of Jacob. The time of Jacob, if you will. And so, look at this dove, look at this. It's a pigeon, but it's nonetheless. And so you're seeing that, wait, the whole cover story to this is evangelical Christianity. The work that the Lord has wrought, or bringing about, or brought about, is actually happening here in the United States with the Israelite movement. The Christians are falling aside in this country. Israel's being awakened right now. And so when we come to know who we are, they're, they're, you know, they're essentially shitting their pants because they know that what the Lord is doing. These stones are crying out. Israel's crying out. Israel's awakening right now. Uh, the seed, the, you know, and, and that's what, you know, and, and so you're seeing there's a spiritual action at work. It's the action of the Holy Spirit leading us now into thoughts that we know 
aren't our own, but they're meant, they're meant to bring us back together that we come to know, to awaken us, that, that they, the other ones, are not getting. The Gentiles, the false Gentiles, not the ones who are going to be cleaving to Israel, but the ones who know that they know now. You just know that you know, and you, you know you can't just prove it to anybody unless they have it, you know, unless you're, you got that crown in you. You got that crown and you're just, you know, you, you, it's heavy. It's a 10 pound crown, you know? And so you got it spiritually though. It's weighty. It's, you're, you're carrying your cross. You, you got, you're stepping into your power. You're going through the, the rigmarole, rigmarole of this program and this trial. And it's, it's the time of our life, but it's the time for our lives. And so God is testing us by that. And so, um, that's what they're keeping from us. And I, and I say this, they, they've kept so much through this that when you begin to break the relief of relationships that never pan out, you, you come to realize it's really not even about those. They might idealize what loving you is like, but to actually have God's cause of love in their very vessels is a whole nother thing. To put on to, to put on corrupt, uh, incorruptibility from corruptibility, it's the changeover that truly unites us in knowing that, wait, every, God's bigger picture is that it's actually unraveling here through us. And yes, those physical things, they might really come to pass. They have to come to pass from here to Israel and back. But we know who we are in God. You know, we know that physical descendancy shows by will show the truth. The light of day will show who the truthful wheat are by by the very fact that the descendants of Israel will be given the Holy Spirit and they will they will be afforded the covering of the Most High by way of a relationship with His Son Jesus Christ, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. And what do you know? Who's coming to Christ more than ever now? The descendants of the Hebrew Israelites. Who's trying to double down right now? All these fucking Edomites and their lies, parading, parading this birthright that will eventually come back to us and the curses will be lifted. It's a real spiritual thing. We're in a real, they're, they're trying to keep this covered up. Look, I went, into, I went into Aloha Grill, got me some Hawaiian barbecue the other day and there was some firefighter, some shaved head, reptile looking ass terror. As soon as he saw me coming, this guy, he was waiting for his order. He had to step out the door so quick to do whatever little ritual he had to do to, 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 get, to, to keep his cool. They know who we are spiritually, you know. And I, I'm going to say this for a lot of you real ones that don't have eyes to see, yet you're, you're working your, your deem right now, you're doing it. They look very different from us physically. They know that. They know that when we are fully able to see them, this is going to be the war of duality at its at its finest hour, <laughs> at its fullest consummation of seeing everything for what it is. It's not going to be they live without the glasses, and then the, then the, the the kingdom is going to be ushered in on a whole nother level. Pray that you don't leave the earth. Pray that the the kingdom of heaven will come here to earth and change it, and that's what it's going to do. And then we will, we will enter our, our, our places of ruling at the right hand of the Father alongside Christ. You know. And so, a lot of Christians are finding out that it's just not happening anymore. Something is, something is failing. Something is not tested. It, it hasn't, Esau hasn't been tested. There's the breakdown in every, any and every way of this duality at every level now. And so the test is coming to them, but they're not able to handle it, you know. And a lot of them, look, we're not talking about unbelievers. A lot of them just are, they're, they're, they're stone cold at this point. A lot of them are, they're, they're walking, talking programs that we, we, there's no reason to go to that, you know. And so be very careful with the so-called TI community. Um, if those ones step up in my life and they let me know that they love me and they want to actually be a part of my life, then I'll understand the cause of love that the Most High has instilled in them. 
And that's the thing you have to remember, last thing to remember for you real ones out there. Do not idealize your relationships. Do not idealize the Most High. Do not idealize anything. And that's where this whole uh, approach to podcasting, this so-called TI community, your congregation or your church, which I don't, I don't attend any church right now, uh, your relationships. If you're doing this, you're going to have to get in right standing order under the most high. And I only say this because I fail at this constantly. I, I want to make sure in the future as I'm being led that I'm not doing this to reach out to that which is never uh, is going to come back to me. You know, I'm doing this to warn you. Don't let that idealization become your end all be all or you will be let down your soul will be required of you you know you will be found wanting through this examination and that and and you will leave for the fault that, that very false letdown of a reason you know you will leave and so make sure when when God calls you to stand up and exit that church that you walk you physically do the work when God gets you to, to step up and say look you need to bind every soul tie and every trauma bond, every affliction that's been put on your life. You got to speak it forth. You got to speak it out. You got to set it before the, the foot of the throne of God's grace. And uh, he will deliver you from that. He will spiritually discerningly make it so apparent by way, that, by way of his physical action of the Holy Spirit that it will be undeniable. Your calling. He will bring you to it, physically, to show you it. This is what went wrong. This is what you did right. This is what you need to work on. This is, this is, this is where you've gained in the bigger picture. Uh, you know. This guy's, he's, he's homeless, but he's, he's yelling out God's word. And I, you know, I, I commend him for that. I'm not against that. People are laughing as they go by, but they're not, you know. He knows that a lot of these people walking the path are just, they're of the world. They're, this is like, look at this path. This is the broad way right here. This is the, this is the, this is an example. This is a microcosm of the duality back and forth, A to B, B to A. It's a broad path, you know. Look at this path. Look at look at all the feet that can go in there. Now God's footprint for you is, is so unique. You gotta seek out those footprints that Christ is leaving in front of you and step into his feet. That's how you know you're a fully your soul is in, in, intact as a true empath, a, a chosen one, a real grafted in Israelite, knowing that the Spirit has shown you of your physical seed and what the what the promises are for you, you know. Point blank period, you know. You guys already know it. I love you guys. Stay blessed. Stay chosen. Do work. It's time. All right, guys. Till the next one. Wherever the spirit leads me to. Uh, you guys already know. I just, I just love everyone who, who, and even those who aren't hanging in, those who are having a hard time. I just, God is growing my love, my cause of love, to, to exemplify that cause of love. You, you need to know that. You need, you need that. Sometimes you don't need other individuals. You need God's cause of love in your vessel so that you can be it. Be the truth, guys. You already know. Christ loves you. God's chosen you out. Let's live it. Let's live it to the fullest. Let's truly, let's truly equate to what God has chosen us to. All right, guys. Godspeed. Peace.